Welcome everyone. Welcome to this Garden Club of Jacksonville program. This is a hybrid program. So we are doing this live at the Garden Club in person with um, about two dozen people here, socially distanced and also on Zoom. And we have a lot of folks joining us on Zoom and we're so happy to have you all here with us. So thank you so much for joining us. This is a uh, Fun With Flowers program, Soulful Stems, a uh, fantastic local business that uh, we'll be highlighting today. And they have really exciting um, ideas about floral design. So we're really excited to have them. Uh, my name is Denise Reagan. I'm the executive director of the Garden Club of Jacksonville. And I'm here with Daniel Stark, who is our operations manager. And he is handling the audio and video duties today. And we're very grateful for that. And I just realized that um, I need to spotlight myself so that people know what I look like. So one moment, start video. There we go. Sometimes we don't always get these things right. All right, so <laughs> um, we could not be here without the help of the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund, whose generous grant is allowing us to put on programs just like this one. If you're not a member of the Garden Club of Jacksonville, today is a great time to consider doing it because we do programs just like this on a regular basis and membership um, is, has its privileges, including lower prices for programs just like this one. So if you're not a member, please look us up. You can go to our website, gardenclubjacks.org and learn how to become a member. You'll also get a link uh, for that um, afterward. We'll send it to everyone who registered. So. Think about it. All right, now the best part of our program, our speakers, our presenters today, Carrie Hartley and Sarath McLennan are co-owners and designers at Soulful Stems by SNK. Soulful Stems specializes in creating complete wedding designs from show-stopping bouquets and boutonnieres to breathtaking centerpieces, tablescapes, and decor. The designers are known for their imaginative flourishes, such as live floral necklaces, boas, crowns, armbands, and tattoos. Carrie was born and raised in Illinois. She joined the Navy and moved to Florida as her first station, and Florida is where she fell in love with flowers and weddings. Carrie is a licensed florist who also enjoys woodworking, theme parks, tattoos, and classic rock. Sarath was born in Thailand, came to the United States in 1989, and has lived in Florida since 1993. She studied culinary arts, but quickly learned her passion was not eating, was not cooking, but eating. I think we can all get on on that board. Um, she is the operations manager for a finance firm by day and florist extraordinaire by weekend. She speaks three languages and is the mother of a teenager. If you can believe that, I don't. All right, so we're so excited to have them and very grateful and um, really fortunate to have their um, really exciting ideas about floral design here. Um, if you have questions, and I'm sure you will, both here in person and online, um, online, please put your questions in the chat and we'll pose them to them throughout the program. And if you have questions in person, we have a mic um, up there. And so you can wander up to the mic and ask questions. Um, you can either uh, do it during the program or we'll have a se section at the end where you have opportunity as well. And of course, if you're here in person, they will be here during your DIY portion and they will roam around and you can ask questions of them personally as well. All right, so with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we will go to Carrie and Sarath. All right, so let's see, I'm going to get rid of me and make it them. All right. <laughs> Hi, welcome guys. Hi guys. Hey. Um, wow. <laughs> what, an, what an introduction. Um, well, as you guys may know, or you ladies may know, my name is Sarath McLennan. Um, I work with numbers from eight to five and then um, in the evening and the weekend, I work with Carrie or alongside Carrie to do flowers. Um, I like to labeled myself as a classic romantic when it comes to designing. Um, and that is why we partner together is because our styles are completely different, but Carrie will be the one to go ahead and introduce yourself and show them. Hey, Carrie. Um, <laughs> I know, very descriptive. 
Um, yeah, so we're very different styles. Um, as you can see, our stuff is ranging completely from kind of mild and, and then a little bit more wild, right? So um, we got into the business, I got into it about eight years ago and she got into it um, about four years ago. Mm -hmm. And so it's been kind of fun just getting to learn. And then we started out kind of just as um, helping each other at weddings and she specializes in coordinating as well. Um, and then we were kind of like, hey, want to like do this thing <laughs> and we kind of partnered up okay. and actually and it's been fun because our our customer base and clientele has actually grown a lot because they realize that we're well-rounded and we can help them um in a more like full capacity so it's been kind of fun getting to go on that journey together and and learn different very different styles i was very, very uncomfortable at first when i was putting fancy things together um and her the same way but with more abstract stuff. <laughs> I'm more about clean lines. Very clean, very round. She's, I'm mild, she's wild, is like we like to call it. Literally, <laughs> that's what it is. I like lines too, but they go in lots of places. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to kind of start with um, kind of some of the things that we've brought. Um, some of these are raffle pieces, some of these are just for the demonstration portion. Um, so kind of start here because it's in front of me. Um, this guy is just a nice, simple standard arrangement. This is a lot of times when we do um, our small arrangements um, for our bouquet deliveries out in town, um, which we do, you can check it out. Um, this is kind of what we kind of go with. So it's a nice, simple standard arrangement, right? Now this is the small one. So normally we go bigger and the bigger they get, the more crazy they get. So it's, um, and we put things that may or may not be flowers in there. There's dried goods, there's painted goods, there's, um, Feathers, I love feathers. Feathers are fun, y'all. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of our standard arrangement. Then we move on to, um, remember that wild thing we were talking about? All right, so really wild. this guy, kind of everybody see that, right? So what does everybody think this is? So, uh -oh. so what does everyone kind of think this is? But I heard boutonniere. I heard her uh, hair barrette. I heard hair barrette. What? Hey, wrist massage. you're a lot closer. All it's right, cool. so this baby is actually made on KT tape, right? Which you know is skin safe. So if you pull this off, this now belongs anywhere you want it to belong on your body. So this is a, a, a different version of a floral tattoo. When we talked about tattoos earlier, this is what we mean. So we have made everything from pieces, um, floral tattoos that go straight down the spine, um, to things that go down the legs and yoga poses. We've made um, armbands. This actually is gonna be, um, this one is made more so for an armband or a wrist piece. So literally you just pull the tape and the guy kind of goes right on and sticks wherever you want it to stick, right? Yeah. So this is the more wild stuff we do. This guy, ooh, fancy. This Before is actually you go what on, we're can I ask be... you a question about the floral tattoo? Yes. So how how do you go about arranging on a tattoo? Like, are there certain things that you're thinking about or rules that you're using to to make that happen? I have no rules. So there there are no <laughs> rules when it comes to carry designing. Um, but a lot of the clients that we do have um, give us a lot of creative freedom when it comes to designing. Um, and, you know, we're, we're getting to know our clients, you know, usually on, a, you know, for tattoos like this is usually a weekly basis. But when it comes to wedding clients and things like that, we're dealing with them for months at a time. So you kind of build a relationship with them and know what their vibe is and what they're looking for. So, you know, for my more so classic romantic customer or client, obviously, it's going to be less dried goods, more, more of the spray roses and things like that. So no rules, just guidelines. Guidelines. We ask for a lot of creative freedom because we it, it comes down to trust. We ask them, hey, you've seen our things, you know us. And, I, and during our consultations, our consultations with our, our clients are very lengthy. We ask them not only what are you looking for, but who are you? What do you like to do? Because we're going to design our florals to you. We want them to look like you. Um, and so that's what makes us a little different. And we don't have, we don't ever create the same arrangement. You'll never see two of anything unless it's in the same wedding. But everything's going to be completely different. Um, so as far as that though, no, we cut our pieces. We'll basically start with our KT tape. Um, you know, KT tape comes in straight strips, right? Okay, so we'll literally take our KT tape, we'll take scissors, we'll cut out our design, we'll draw our design on there. 
whatever that might be. We'll plan it for a, the location on the body that it's planned to go on. Um, and then we have really awesome um, glue that we use, this floral glue. Um, it allows flexibility, so it, it kind of seeps into the fabric on the KT tape. Um, and then we just, I mean, snip and dip and dab. I mean, <laughs> it's kind of a cute little process. There. There's rock music playing in the background when she's doing this. So she's not telling you that part. No, that's at all times. <laughs> she's like, can we listen to something else? Later. Well, and I highly recommend people to go to your Instagram feed <laughs> and check out. There's many, many examples of um, some really amazing down the back for these backless dresses. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, if you're having perhaps a special occasion, it doesn't have to be a wedding. It could be like the highlight of uh, the evening if you showed up with one of those on. Yeah. It's pretty <laughs> okay, fun. Okay, Denise. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we are on uh, Instagram, Facebook. Um, we do have a website. We do have a Pinterest. So you can connect with us in many ways on social media. Don't worry. We're going to bribe you to take a selfie and post it later. Yeah. Um, so as far as the next arrangement, this is actually what we're making today. Can everybody kind of see this style? So this is more of the wild. Um, you see how it's kind of abstract a little bit and left kind of low and, and round. But we're going to try to do a, a mixture of both today for you guys so you guys can see. I keep saying you guys, but it's you ladies. So I apologize. <laughs> the general is kind of touchy. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, do you have any questions, Denise, oh, or any yeah. more questions? Before we move. Well, before you go to the box, how about um, when you're doing the, the standard um, arrangements, mm -hmm. which I mean, we already know that none of your arrangements are standard. Um, you know, what, you know, rules, if you're talking about rules, but what um, things are you thinking about like that would make a great bouquet? Like what are the elements? So we think about that in two different ways. So you start, because you're the S and I come first. Mm. Um, so usually when a significant other reaches out to us and say, hey, I, you know, my wife's anniversary is coming up or our anniversary is coming up. She likes this. This is her favorite colors. This is her favorite flower. Um, and we always ask two to three days um, for any type of special ordering. So that way we can kind of ensure that we can make it super special for the recipient. Um, and that's what we do is we take the recommendation that the significant other or whomever that's ordering for the client um, we take into consideration whenever we are going to our wholesaler and purchasing the flowers. Um, and they'll tell us, uh, we do have a Dropbox, I believe, that says, you know, what's the style? Is it, you know, the romantic, classic, you know, traditional bouquet, things like that. Um, even with our traditional bouquets, our, it's not the traditional that you typically would go to a wire service and, and order, you know, because they're real people that are designing it. So the pictures that you do see on, I don't want to name drop any names, but yeah, those type of wire service, online those are not what you're truly getting so a lot of times when your recipient gets the flowers they're like that's that's not what they ordered because we're it's not a picture you know we're making it so that's my answer yeah that's great all right take it away okay fun stuff okay so when you get to your table as you came in you kind of saw that there were three different objects kind of chilling right so you have your vase of your, all your flowers, all your things that are going to be actually in this whole thing, right? Um, you're going to have a bag. This has all your stuff in it. Um, and that has literally all the hard goods in it. The only one that's not is your box here. That's your vase. So inside of here, there's an actual glass vase to keep its composure and its sturdiness, right? Because we don't want things just spilling everywhere. Um, so that's going to be the most fun part that we're going to go through. We're always going to start from hard goods and then move on to perishables, okay? So um, when you get to your table, you'll take your box, you'll unwrap your box with your base. We're good. We're oh, oh, okay. Try to make it. So opening the box. So just a nice standard um, glass base. We did use the glass cube this time. It's going to be four inches by four inches by four. Um, and so that's going to be the exact fit for your box. If you ever go in your home and you're going to recreate anything like this, make sure that whatever container you're putting inside of your other, you know, your outer layer is the same size, leave no room because that water is going to slish slash. Um, I don't know if they told you or if it was ever brought up, but we're eco-friendly forests, So we don't use um, oasis or foam. Um, we use all reusable materials and or organic materials. Um, so either we're going to be able to properly dispose of it or we're going to keep using it until it dies. 
<laughs> um, so that's how we're gonna do that. So anytime you do that, make sure it's a snug fit. If it's not, stuff paper around it, okay? Um, when you get your bag, your bag has all your fun stuff in it. So when you pull it out, it's gonna kind of pull out like an envelope and you'll just kind of open it up like a book, all right? There's gonna be a box in there, which is the outer layer here. There's gonna be ribbon because we're gonna strap ribbon around the sides. So your ribbon's gonna come around the sides right here. So anytime you get a gift box, right? It's always wrapped with a pretty ribbon. Then you take it off and it's like flare, it's beautiful, right? Yeah, see, there it is. <laughs> Listen, that helps, man. I need to see her all the encouragement ever or I'll get real awkward. Then we're gonna actually wrap it with tissue paper, right? Everybody will have their own unique tissue paper. If you don't like it, switch with friends. All right, um, so we're gonna, so that's what's all in here. And then you're gonna have all your mechanics. So your grid tape is gonna be in here. On the back of that is gonna have your brown tape. This is brown paper tape. Um, so that way it sticks really well, but it's nice and eco-friendly, right? If there is an alternative, we find it and we use it. Um, and then you're gonna have a message card. So on the top, you'll have a card that you can actually write your message to whomever you give it. And if it's to yourself, then write you a pretty note. All right. So from there, now that you know what all is in your kit, we're gonna kind of show you how to do the process, right? So your first one is gonna be your grid tape. There's gonna be four strips, okay? And it's gonna be exactly like a tic-tac-toe, right? You're gonna go two across the top, um, you know, north to south, and then you're gonna go the other way, east to west. All right? Yes, west to east, I go that way. And what this allows is this is gonna allow stability. When you first start putting stems into an open vase, they're gonna fall because of gravitational pull. So if you give them some kind of support to actually fall onto, then you're gonna be able to see your design clearly. Um, we were talking about design earlier and kind of how we see it. I'm one of those that I see the overall shape first. So literally you think of a silhouette, right? A black silhouette. That's how I see a design. So this grid tape allows me to start filling in that black silhouette with the flowers, right? Cause they're gonna stay where I put them. Um, then after you get your grid tape on, we're going to build your box, okay? So you're going to go ahead. Your box actually has, oh, yeah, here, shut it. Right. The water in. Yeah, you can put your, oh, yeah, so the water. So you're your base. Yep, the water that's in your base, you're just going to pour into your actual um, glass vase. We didn't want to give you too much because on the drive home, we didn't want it to slush slosh everywhere. But when you get home, please make sure you fill it up. One of the best ways to keep your flowers alive, alive um, is to keep your water filled up, right? Give them fresh, fresh nutrients. Um, next thing, we're gonna take your, your brown craft box and we're gonna put it all together. Um, it's pretty easy. You just kind of, yep, put it together. There's gonna be two like awkward pieces. that You're gonna push in first and then the other pieces are gonna slide into them. I Jimmy rigged it. Hmm? I Jimmy rigged it. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful, right? Yay. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab your tissue paper, all right? And this is to give it that super fun gift box look, right? And it's already pre-cut, so you're just gonna pull it open. There's a couple ways that you can do this. Um, the way that we did it here is you took your paper and actually shifted it, and then you put your, so like, oh, right here. Yep. So when you lay it down on your table, you can put it this cockeyed kind of, and then put your vase straight on. And when you do that, that way, when you do it, you're kind of going to come up around and you'll grab it and hold, and then you'll shimmy it down inside your box. Does that make sense? Cool. Okay. You're shimmy. Shimmy, shimmy, shimmy. Shimmy. All right. Beautiful. Now you're going to take your ribbons, right? And you're going to go from one side all the way to the other side as even as possible. Um, and you're kind of, you know, whatever way you want to go, if you want to go front to back or side to side, whatever you want to do. You're going to take your brown tape. Um, this brown tape is pretty strong. Everything's going to be on wax paper, so it should come right off. And you're going to start breaking it down into just the little pieces and then roll your tape. And then it'll actually go, leave a little slack. So, yeah. And then you just take your tape 
and your uh, ribbon and you're gonna come straight up the middle and you're gonna tape at the top. So at the top of where your box is, the ending of it, um, that's where you're gonna have it. And then you're gonna leave a little slack so that way it looks like it was actually undone on top. That's adorable. <laughs> and then you'll do the same exact thing with the other one and just crisscross it, okay? We have um, a question uh, from Zoom that says, does the, does the design on the paper go up or down? I'm on the paper. <laughs> Which paper? Which paper? The tissue paper? Yes. So when it's folded, it's going to be inside out because that's the way that it came. Um, but you'll, you'll want to actually have it. Um, when you put it around the thing, the design should be inside because then you're going to fold it over and then when it folds over you want it right side out that answer the question all right so the design is on kind of the top yes that makes sense okay yes. so hopefully madeline that answers your question gorgeous and it should look just like this once we're yeah. done and it looks like you see there's like some give and it just looks like it just wrapped or unwrapped beautiful now we kind of come to the fun part of actually designing um, so the way that we kind of do it is we like to start with a partial greenery base. That way you have some real nice, it just added um, stability really. But it creates a foundation of where you're gonna put your flowers into, right? If you look at the, the anatomy of a, a flower, it's gonna have the big bloom on top and then you have your greenery pieces kind of all down the stem, right? So we kind of follow that same uh, methodology. And then you can do this however you want. If you see colors first, put your, you know, put your greenery that's most pleasing to you first. Um, if you see shape first, like I do, then put your greenery in the shape that you want it to go in. That means if you have a real abstract thought like me, and I like things, I always like this weird like S motion, right? So it like goes real weird over here, and then it kind of goes sad over here. It's not sad, it's just droopy. <laughs> it's not sad, it's like, it's just sad. It's laying down. Um, Could we move the, um, the arrangement that's yes. um, to the... Box. I'm sorry, the, box. the, the box. Yes, arrangement box. to the side and kind of center your the box you're working on a little bit more. Sure. Thank you. Oh, this is Bethany, by the way, guys. Yay. Ladies, this is Bethany. She's assisting us today. Um, she'll be walking around once you guys are at your um, station and she'll be assisting to pass out more flowers if you need more. Thank you, Bethany. Um, but kind of what I was talking about is if you're going to do an abstract shape like that, put your hardier, your hardier greenery in first. That means your, your stems that kind of don't give, they don't drape or anything. Those are the ones that you're going to want to do that with. So build up with your tallest ones. And that way you can kind of come in and with your shorter pieces later. Okay. Um, if you're going to have pieces that are going to hang, put those pieces in at towards the front first. Um, that way you had that foundation. Because once you start putting your flowers in, it's gonna be a little more difficult to put those greenery pieces where you want them to go, just because there's not as much space. And you'll start pulling the petals down into the arrangement instead of having them nice and perky up. Okay. So I have my base. There you go, there's your base. Um, then you're always gonna wanna start with a couple of your big blooms, right? So if you look kind of in this guy, I took, I started with this big white garden rose right here. It's called a Myra. Um, and then I came over with my Cremone and I put both of my big blooms in. And that way it gave me a really strong sense of, okay, where do the heck do I want to go with this, right? It fills in first. Now keep in mind that you do have a message card that's going to be on the back here. I don't know if everybody can see that. You, all, you have that message card that's going to be there, right? So if you're going to build in the middle, build down, right? And if you're going to go crazy, go crazy on the set, right? <laughs> like me at a party, I go crazy on the set, <laughs> all right? But that's how you're going to keep it. So start with your big blooms, and then you're going to kind of come and fill in around that. Once you start filling in with your other pieces, work largest to small. So if you have those real cute pieces like your, um, like your little mums right there, and you see how they got shorter stems on them, those are gonna, if you pull those apart, they're great fillers, great fillers. And you can kind of scatter them everywhere. Um, it just makes a really fun time because they have a long enough stem that they're gonna be able to stick where you want them to stick. Now you have some pieces that you're gonna wanna keep long. Do those pieces kind of more towards the end as well. 
it's just gonna give you a little bit better, because if you stick this in midway through, it's just gonna thaw. So get more of a base going first, right? So kind of start low, build high. Any questions while we're still doing this? Yes. <laughs> that would take a lot of my awkwardness away, guys. <laughs> so we have some people who are like, it's too fast. You're, you're losing me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Um, but uh, yeah, so I like the idea of um, starting low and going higher as you get the, the base started. So that's, that's a good uh, trick for everybody. Um, so, you know, what, just uh, while you're working on this, what are some of your favorite flowers and why, and why do you like working with those flowers? Sure. Um, so my personal favorite uh, flowers are orchids. Um, growing up for every birthday that I had, my father would gift me a orchid plant. Um, granted, I killed every one of them by like the third month <laughs> of the flower being gifted to me. So I don't know if he was gifting me one every year, because he wanted to or because it died every year and he needed to give me a new one. So that was a significant reason behind uh, me loving orchids growing up. Um, as far as designing, my favorite flowers to design with are um, garden roses and my other favorite rose would be the Earl Grey rose though. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the Earl Grey rose, but they're beautiful and they open up really, really big. Um, I love designing with more of the bigger fuller flowers. Um, that's just my personal favorite. Um, I'm kind of the opposite. I like all the weird little stuff because I feel like if I can put enough little stuff, it'll just make your eyes go, ooh, what's next? Um, so I like all the little stuff. As far as favorite flowers, I think I've been doing it a little long because I, I kind of like all of them now. Um, one that's really fun though that I love to design with anytime I can, it's a hard one to come by. Um, I love a big, huge king protea. I mean, literally it's heavy flower and it's like this big. It's so big that some people have it as the only part of their bouquet at a wedding. Their girls will literally just come down with this big old cacti looking thing, right? And it's so fun, but it, it comes in pink and it comes in white. Uh, and the pink one's a little more blushy, but it, it's like spiky. It literally looks like this. And then when you look in the middle, it has a cone shape, which is all kind of, um, it really looks like filaments, like fuzzy little filaments, and they all kind of close in together. And then the longer you have it, the more it'll all open. And now you have this big spiky plant with all these little feathery things in it. I don't know, it's, it's just pretty cool. Now the stalk on that thing is huge. It's like, that's the stem on it. That's how big, and then it comes like that. So that's a really fun one. Um, any kind of protea or cactus um, or feathers, um, that's all me now. Oh. <laughs> So, um, Sarath, tell us, um, you know, like as you're adding things, what's what's making you go to certain things um, in the order that you're choosing to do them? What? Ooh, good question. Give us a little insight into in the side inside of Sarath's mind. Well, I'm actually using <laughs> Carrie's technique, um, which is a really great technique. I always like she's mentioned starts with the bigger bloom first, kind of that's where your focus is going to be when you gift a gift or like you know the gift box to someone. Or whenever, whenever you receive an arrangement, you know, if you ever think about it, when, when the delivery guy comes up to your door and he hands it to you, the first thing you notice is that that one flower, right? And that's what I like to start off with first. Um, obviously, the greenery first, and then the big blooms right next after. Um, and then I kind of start with my other uh, focal flowers, which are the tulips and things like um, the lilies, the stalk and things. And then I'll go with the filler flowers last. And that's just kind of like just what the word means. It's just, you just kind of fill in those empty gaps. Um, that's all I got, guys. <laughs> that's all I got. Listen, we're she's behind the, the She's scene. the one that talks more. Yes, and if you don't remember, I'm a numbers girl, so I, I talk to spreadsheets all day. So this is like new. I talk to flowers, I'm no different. <laughs> um, another fun thing that actually just kind of popped into my head, when you're designing, one thing to keep in mind is depth, okay? And what I mean by that is layering. So stacking your flowers in different depths into your arrangements, it's gonna do a couple things. One, it's it, the lower that those flowers are, it's creating a base, all right? So that way it's looking full. So you're not just looking at an arrangement and you're looking straight down into the water in the vase. You're keeping it low to create color contrast, depth, and variety, right? So you get more flowers and that in turn is going to spread those other stems. So it's going to, instead of looking straight up like this, it's going to be nice and full, right? Because you have a base at this layer now. 
then once you have a base like that, especially because you're going to create one with greenery, and then you're going to come in with your bigger blooms to create that base, then you can come start doing all the funner, well, that's a word today. Um, <laughs> you're going to come in with some of your uh, more dainty blooms, right? And you're going to pull those out. And the reason you pull those out is because it's going to create that contrast, all right? It's now it's doing two things. It's making it taller and it's making it more pleasing to the eye because it's looking a lot bigger than if you just have one roundy nabby thing, right? Um, and it lets you use just a little less flowers because you're creating just a small shape here and you're, you're highlighting your flowers. So instead of being all squished together and kind of sad, um, they're getting to be, you know, they're getting their own spotlight. They're getting to shine. And there's some flowers that are just prettier than others, okay? It's true. And when you have those flowers, those are the flowers that you push the other ones that aren't so great down and you <laughs> bring those ones up. So they are like, hey, you notice me, okay? So those are the ones you keep a little bit longer and a little bit fuller and a little bit more standout, right? So an anemone, anemone, little anemone, right? This is one of my favorite flowers as far as the, um, I guess, less wild. It's one of my favorites though. And it's also considered a premium flower, which means it costs more money. Um, because it has different growing times. It's a little more gentle. You have to be a little more delicate with it. Um, AKA when they're shipping it, it might die faster. So they charge us more, um, but that's a premium flower. And so when I do an arrangement, that'll never be one that gets used on the base. It's always gonna be one that's gonna be high, like highlight, highlighted. I don't know. It's always gonna be a showstopper, right? So you're gonna put that in the face of whoever is getting this. Does that make sense? So remember when Carrie mentioned when you guys go get your, your fillers um, and you see how there's different uh, stems here? Is it stem? Yeah. Make sure you're not cutting it like this and you're trying to work with just one. You can cut, there's probably like three or four cuts on this that you can use. Mm -hmm. um, so you're making this one stem go a very long way. Mm -hmm. So again, just filler flowers. So we literally just kind of bring it in and this is kind of more so about the base where we kind of just tuck it in low. So when you're looking at it, there's not like empty holes in them. That's all I got. It's a great opportunity for questions. Please ask so um, everyone received different flowers. Tell, yes. give us a little um, background about why you chose to do that. Because you're all different. Mm -hmm. Everybody's different. So we want you to be able to go to your table and design something that looks like you. So that's why we set them all up. And we, you know, I watch y'all come in and, ooh, this one's my favorite color. I even and you, seen, went, you like beeline straight to that I, I even seen one lady mo like moved uh, a vase <laughs> because she didn't want to be up front. <laughs> But she liked the vase, so she moved it. <laughs> Raise your hand. <laughs> no shame. That's a good question. That's a and if you can repeat really some of the questions just so that everybody, sure. everybody can understand. Sure. Yeah. So she's asking when you go to the grocery store, you go to Publix. Publix always has that three for 12, right? That's a great deal. So <laughs> you, always, you go to the grocery store. And even honestly, if you go to the grocery store and you get one of their pre-made arrangements, you take it home, you break it apart, and you make it you, right? So this is a great time to do that. Now, her question is when you go and there's one or two stems that might look questionable, what can you use them or do you need to just pitch them? It depends on the shape. You always want to look at the stem, all right? So if the stem is soggy, if it is, and it's soggy to a point where you can't cut it and be fine, um, like cut above it. If it's soggy and it's droopy, pitch it, right? It's because that's going to continue, kind of like a virus. It's just going to get. And that one stem will ruin your entire bouquet. Yes, it will. It'll poison the water. It'll mm -hmm. it'll dirty the water, and it'll literally make all the other flowers sad. Um, another place to look is actually under the head. Can I want to like it? It's okay. I don't care. Whatever. So another place to look is actually <laughs> under, underneath, right? We're at the connector from the stem to the bloom. Okay. This is a great place to tell if your flowers are, are not going to make it because what happens is this is one of, this is where, you know, the water goes straight into the petals and brings the color out and all that fun stuff. If you look here and it is looking yellow or it's looking brown, that means that maybe not today or tomorrow, but eventually this is gonna start falling off. And once it does, 
it's going to take it like pedal off like one at a time. And then it just, it's, it's a really weird, sad process. Um, but yes, so that's, that's the best way to know. So if it, but if it, that's the case and it's only one of these, take it off, take it off straight at the stem, do a 45 degree cut, right? Cause we always do a 45 degree cut. Does anybody know why we do that? I'm partially deaf, say that one more time. Yes, so the water, so it's more surface area for water to get inside, absolutely. Um, so you always wanna do that, right? Nice sharp scissors or a nice sharp knife and take it right off. So then you can salvage that whole flower just by taking a piece that may not be so great off, but still use it and rub on it. None in the water. If it is below the water line, take it off. The, the greenery, uh, leftover leaves, especially if you're talking about something like eucalyptus, uh -huh. uh, if that gets in the water, it'll dirty the water, it'll poison the water, and it'll make everything die a lot faster. So any leaves that you get, strip them. Yes, ma'am. The philosophy on uh, numbers in an arrangement, like how many flowers oh. of each. Do it until your spirit tells you to stop. Oh, no, we're not. No, 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 no. We design until it looks great. Now, as a foundational principle, sure. If you go back and you read all the fun, you know, all your foundation. Yes, it tells you it is more pleasing to the eye to design in threes. Now, when you're just starting out, I will say it does make it easier because you'll understand. Um, usually you're working with a round base, right? So if you're working with a round base, you have the triangle method. I love the triangle method. It's great. It immediately creates a flare. So if you are just starting out and you want a big, full, fluffy thing, use your round base, use your triangle method. So if you have three of one stem, you put one here, one here, and one here, and now it's going to flare, okay? And then when you come in with your other flowers, you're going to do that same thing, but you're going to do it kind of like, a, you know, when you draw your front star? Yeah, it's going to be just like that. You're going to go the opposite way, and you're going to literally keep doing that until it gets to a point that you think it is very well mixed. Another reason for that, um, or another way that you can do that is instead of going, um, instead of doing a mixed bouquet, you can also do what's called grouping, right? Grouping is really fun, especially if you're making any kind of um, designed bouquet. So a lot of people like to do the rainbow gradient, right? That's grouping. So it means putting like flowers obviously together. Um, and it doesn't even have to be the same flower. It can literally, you can do it by color, you can do it by flower style, you can do it by greenery based. Um, and, and you can you can do it by height. So if you have a vase and you want it to be a gradual incline, that's still grouping because you're putting like things together in order to create that overall design. But yes, uh, traditionally speaking, yes, it is groups of uh, three and five in odd numbers. Um, we we don't we don't pay attention to rules. But yeah, guidelines, no rules. Guidelines. That's right. It's pirate code. How I got out of that? Oh, confidence. So the question is, um, where did you get that confidence to go past the rules? <laughs> I mean, I've always been a rebel, but. <laughs> um, I follow rules. Um, she makes me break them. So if, to answer your question, she's my confidence level of being able to go, well, let's not do this traditional, the traditional way of what you're mentioning. And she's just like, she pushes me to go, nope. You have free range and you know as long as it looks good and, and the client loves it have at it so a lot of trust in yourself you have to trust your gut your gut all knows what's up right so if you look at it and, and we actually design in a mirror i know a lot, a lot of people don't do that they're kind of looking straight down it we design it in a mirror because i want to see what my clients are going to see right and a lot of our bouquets especially when you're talking about bride bouquets a lot of our bouquets don't have a back because when you do it on the back it forces your bouquet out Right, and so um, I, I don't like that. I don't want those flowers are being wasted on hitting your dress or they're bleeding onto your dress even worse and you've paid God knows how much for your dress. Oh my gosh, I've seen them as low as 500 bucks and then as high as like 30 grand. Crazy, David T. Sarah's whew, breaking boundaries. Um, so, so we have a flat back method, which means we use that stacking method we talked about earlier and we build up. But when we do that, we do it in a mirror. So we trust our confidence in ourselves 
and in the mirror that when I hand this to my client, this is exactly what they're going to see. And is it going to wow them? Because if it doesn't wow me, it's not going to wow them, especially being in the industry a long, you know, longer time or the more often that you're practicing, you got to trust yourself. If this looks good to you, chances are it's going to look good to somebody else. That's where your confidence comes from. Trial and error. Man. A fresh cut and new water. Yeah, mm -hmm. but our food's fine and all, um, but nothing beats a fresh cut and, and new water. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, the hydrangea. Oh, the hydrangea, so it doesn't die. So really funny story about the hydrangea. Um, I was designing a, a an all hydrangea um, arrangement one year for one of my girlfriend's uh, dinner. And I probably purchased a couple of bunches from Trader Joe's and hydrangeas are pretty expensive too. They're about maybe $6 for three stems. I woke up the next morning, all of them died. I hadn't even gotten a chance to design them. So I called Carrie, I go, all my hydrangeas just died and I can't go buy anymore. What do I do? This lovely lady tells me, you cut it. You literally take the hydrangea head bud and you dip it in water and you let it sit and you don't look at it for about two, three hours. And it just, even when it's wilted, you can still bring it back. Give it a fresh cut, fresh water, dip it the head into the water, like submerge it for a couple of seconds, bring it back up. It's gonna look crazy. And you're gonna probably think it's gone, it's forever. Leave it, put it in the vase, go do your thing, come back and the thing wakes back up. It's great. There, and, and it's funny because it depends on what florist you ask too. There's actually a lot of methods. Mm -hmm. um, we have our preferences. But listen, sometimes it don't work. So you got to move along. You don't just keep trying the same thing. Um, every flower is different. They've been grown in different locations. They are adapted to different environments. So not all of the same methods are going to work. So a lot of times with the hydrangea, you have obviously the head dunk. You have a flower bath, which is literally you fill it up with nice, warm, sometimes hot water and you let it just lay on in there like it's soaking in the tub. The other method that I love, I swear by it, it's my favorite method. Take your hydrangea, cut it as low as you can without compromising the integrity of whatever arrangement you're going to use it in. Cut it 45, cut it straight up, right? There's a lot more water getting in. Dip that baby in a lump and put it in nice hot water all the way to the top of the glass. That's my favorite method. It works every time. I have had hydrangeas literally for a wedding, like where like 80 of them just decided to die. And I brought all of them back. Say again. Alum. Alum. A-L-L-U-M. It's actually a McCormick seasoning. Yep, you use it for canning. The preservative. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Swear by it. My favorite. The but there's nothing worse hydrangeas. than waking up the next day and all your hydrangeas have died and you tend to panic. So if you have two to three hours before, whatever you need to do, just dip it. Mm -hmm. You heard it here first. Canning. <laughs> yes. Pick, pick all your hydrangeas. <laughs> <laughs> Pickle your hydrangeas, they'll last forever, just like your pickles. What's the um, most unusual um, items that you've used in arrangements? I know that we have um, people who've used um, different edibles and uh -huh. so forth. So what, what are your favorite, like kind of weird um, and wonderful things that you like to put into besides feathers? Oh, man. That's a good Carrie's question. Oh. What was that? That's a good carry question. Ah. My clients don't like to ask for weird stuff. <laughs> My clients live on weird it. stuff. <laughs> um, actually, so I've had some really fun, and they're a lot of times they are requested. Um, my personal favorite, y'all know, is what? Yeah, there it is. Um, but I use everything. So literally anything that I'm like, hey, that might look cool at a bouquet, I will put it in there, y'all. I really will. I will find a way to glue it to a stem and put it in there. I will wire it. I have built things. Literally, I've gone out to my shed, grabbed my circular saw, and I have built things to put in whatever object I think is cool enough to be in this arrangement. Um, sometimes things will dry out, and I like them more, apparently, because then I can either use them as a dried good, and they still look pretty and drapey, or I'll spray them with a metallic paint, and I will put them in, and now you have a really cool, fun accent piece that not that's not usually in a lot of uh, things. And actually, one of them's in here. So this is a copper. This is a dried out willow eucalyptus so I took it and I sprayed it with copper paint and now it's a cool accent um, well, 
talk about uh, the drying and, and that that's one of the things that uh, that your company does a lot of we do um because we are eco-friendly we either are going to disperse or uh, excuse me dispense of these materials organically as possible um we do have a um, compost bin um or we'll put them in our recycling um, or our favorite thing is we'll dry them out. And it depends on what flower or greenery you're talking about drying out. So if you have a bloom that is a real full head and you want it to kind of stay to where it's, you know, coming down, you're just gonna tip it upside down. You're gonna use twine, ribbon, um, whatever you want, Swiss tie, whatever you want. And you're gonna find a place that you can hang it and you're gonna leave it there and let it hang in a dry location. Don't put it in the bathroom. Right? <laughs> You'll be really sad what happens to it with more moisture. <laughs> Um, but so you're going to hang those upside down. If you have something that is naturally drapey, so you're a lot of your eucalyptus, right? A lot of, um, especially your willow eucalyptus that likes to hang. Amaranthus. Amaranthus is, um, I thought we had one. Oh, right here. Mm -hmm. Amaranthus, right? That's a hangy one. That's a drapey one. So when you have things like that, let them dry in a vase upright because otherwise if you tip it over, graduation, uh, gravity pull, gravitational pull, there we go, got there, <laughs> right? Gravitational pull is gonna pull it all down. So when you put it up, it's gonna it's be like, up. right? <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> I had a whole bride who took her whole bouquet upside down with all this drapey greenery. She's like, it just doesn't look the same. I was like, you dang right, no. <laughs> Like, come on over <laughs> and we swap them out. And we do preserve um, yes. bouquets and things like that, too. So if you were gifting um, a bouquet to someone special and it just means a lot to them, you could always bring it back to us and we'll preserve it for you. Um, so that, you know, it's something that lives on as a gift, um, especially with bridal bouquet. We've started this thing where um, we offer to make wreaths mm -hmm. out of your bridal bouquet. You know, something nice to give to the bride and the groom, you know, when they buy the, you know, next, the next step in life is usually buy a house. So now they have a nice, beautiful wreath to hang at their door, and it's made out of this, the exact flower that was in the bouquet of their wedding. Yep. So okay. we do offer uh, preservation of flowers too. Yep. So not that just too dresses, is adorable. Flowers. That's that's adorable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So show us what you've come up with here. So show us the. the oh, we have one yeah. more question really quick. Yeah, we love everybody. As long as you have it, um, she can ship it to us or you can bring it to us and then we'll ship it back to her um, and make a wreath out of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And our contact, um, Carrie, I did, you did put a business card yes. in each bag. So all of our contact information will be there um, and all of our service sets. That's right. So um, Denise, we are now done with the our gift box. Yes. So um, kind of give us a little tour of the, uh, the flowers you used and uh, what, what's in there. Okay, you wanna go over the flowers? So she went fun and bold and used all the colors, right? Um, see, this is the point where I want to quiz you guys. Is that okay? Oh, okay, cool. So can everybody see this? Because who knows what that is? Just say it. Tulip. Tulip. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Somebody's paying attention. There mm -hmm. we go. What about this guy? Somebody I heard it. it. Yep. Stock. A stock. Mm -hmm. um, and I A what? A stock. stock. Stock, well, S-T-O-C-K, stock. stock. Okay. That's like a sure. pile of fun stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. um, stock is actually pretty cool too. Um, one, it needs to stay in water because it will die on you real quick. But if you get stock that has just been picked, stock, stock has an amazing smell to it. If you go somewhere where it's been in a cooler for a little bit, the smell tends to fade away. But man, it's, it, it's a real light and airy smell. And it's just beautiful. And it's really affordable too. It's one of the more affordable flower options. Um, okay, next one. Let's see here. Ooh, I can't tip it that fast. Ooh, big green. Yeah. She knows her flowers. She does. So you have to repeat when they. It's gonna, oh, sorry. Yes. It's a chrysanthemum. Does anybody know a type? Yes. <laughs> Nailed you it. You need to teach the class. No. Um, but yes, and then as far as the things you cannot see, there's more mums. All right, there's some, um, there's mums here, there's mums here, let's see, there's mums there. Status. Status, that's a fun one, it's a great filler. Status is one that if you do want to preserve or dry your flowers out, status is amazing, it stays. Like status looks pretty much like that, just a, it's like a McDonald's cheeseburger, it just kind of lasts. Right? <laughs> <laughs> 
I like fast food, y'all. <laughs> um, we like to eat. Yeah. <laughs> um, so status is a great one, though. It really does maintain its shape. Um, no matter if you hang it upside down or you leave it upright, it's going to stay. And it's actually one of those that if we put in an arrangement, you would never know if it was dried out or not. Mm -hmm. It's a great long lasting. And it comes in, we were talking about little legs earlier, right? It comes in lots, like lots, it's very full. And you can, and they're long too. They connect and they're very long. It's like a, you like my image? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we have a mini green hydrangea in the back here. Mini green hydrangeas tend to be just a little bit hardier than your big full bloom. Mm -hmm. And that's just because it has so, a big full bloom has a lot more water that it needs. And it tends to suck that water up really quick. So it's either going to starve the other flowers or it's going to get deprived because of the other flowers. The mini green lasts a little bit longer because there's not as big of a head to do it with. Does that make sense? And then she's got really fun stuff. Does anybody know what this is? This feathery stuff here. You should, it's Florida, it's invasive. Mm -hmm. This is. No. Nope, it's close, it is a grass. It is. Uh, yeah, pompous. Yep, so I'm sure you've seen pompous in really big stalks. Mm -hmm. that... And if you have some in your backyard, please invite us over. Yes, we'll come, <laughs> we'll cut it right down for you. It's invasive, you, you don't, you don't need it. it. We need it, <laughs> we need it, yeah. Um, but it's really fun because if you do wanna put it in your things, it's also one that you can dry out, right? And it'll maintain its, its shape. And two, um, it can be broken down into so many pieces, mm -hmm. so many pieces. So we use it. Say again. Ooh. How old is your oldest How pompous old? grass? Was yeah. the question. Because remember, we 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 are eco friendly, so we reuse it as much as we can until it goes away. I'm not playing. I think I have one that's like five years old, and it still looks amazing. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like hoard it because I don't want anybody to have it. And if you get it like fresh out of um, its natural habitat, which is on the side of the road or in your backyard, um, you're going to have to hairspray it because yes. it goes everywhere. As soon as you shake it, so it is all the little other pieces. So right here, this is what it looks like. Oh, yeah. It's like and it's like natural form. That's a newer one. So you walk outside with this, it's going to get all over you. <laughs> you know those dandelions that you make a wish on? Yep, just like that. Um, and then we have things like bunny tails, right, which are these little guys. Just a little poof at the end. And they it's considered a weed, but it's fun. Oh, and then we have a lily. Oh, wow. We have a lily in there? Yep, we do have lilies in there. Right there. Can you preserve you? And then we do have a, um, a preservative, or preservative, a preserved uh, eucalyptus, which was, um, would you consider that to be dried or? Yeah. Yeah. So this is right here. Preserved. So you, you're probably used to seeing them like green, but once they're preserved, they're a little more of the burgundy-ish color. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing we have in here, which you can see a couple here, this sticky outy thing right here. So that's actually um, larkspur. It's dried larkspur. So you know larkspur comes and it's really tall, right? It's got all these little blooms. Um, it's one that's been tipped upside down, left in a nice dry area, and it, it's still beautiful. Now it is fragile. Some of these, a lot of times once your stuff starts drying out, it is going to be a lot more fragile. So when you mess with it, Keep in mind that it's fragile and don't be swinging it all over the place like my brides do in their bouquets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, sometimes there's little poof poofs everywhere. Um, but yeah. So that is your final gift box. And then towards the end, there's the blank card. Um, and then you should have some leftover tape um, that was on the wax. And you just literally slap that bad boy on right here, write a note to yourself or to whomever you want to gift it to, and it should look just like this. That's it. That's lovely. Ta da! <laughs> <laughs> we do have a question on uh, Zoom that asks uh, Do you grow any of your own flowers or greenery? Ooh, I keep myself alive eight to 10 business days. <laughs> I just started, um, I've started growing some panties. Um, according to the box, it said that it's in season. To, the best time to grow it in Florida is between February and March but it won't give you any flowers until the next year. So now I just have a really big bush of just greenery. Um, my husband's like, what's this? Is this weed? Like, what is, you know, are we supposed to kill it? What is it? And I'm just like, it's my panties. He's like, it's your what? It's my panties, leave it alone. <laughs> and we'll have flowers next year. So it's in the backyard for now, living its best life. Nice. I, I have campus grass. She has a magnolia tree. Yep, that I cut down earlier. Oh, that's she awesome. had a magnolia tree. I, 
anything I can use for a bouquet, I'll put it in there. Magnolia is one of the best. It's got two, it's a two-tone, right? So it's brown on the back and green on the front. Um, fills a lot of space for your larger arrangement, so it stands out. Great piece. And we, we love supporting local uh, growers. Yes. So um, if you guys know anyone that's local here in Jacksonville that we may not know of, we love to support them. So um, oftentimes we do have to get flowers shipped in, um, and which is not usually the best, but you know, when you're a florist, there's always flowers in demand. And sometimes your next door neighbor may not have enough flowers to give us. So <laughs> we'll come yeah. back next week. Yeah. Any other questions from the audience here? All right. I think they're ready to design. Um, so uh, can we have another big round of applause for <laughs> Carrie and Sarah? Oh, <laughs> donation. What's that? Our donation. Our donation process, have we talked about that? Oh, no, go ahead, please. Okay, so one of my favorite things about our company is not only are we eco-friendly, um, but we, lo we love our community. I'm actually from a really small town. Um, like my husband makes fun of me, small town, like 50 square miles. And he's like, we're like 900. I said, I know <laughs> 18 of those fit into you. Um, but small town, community is really big. My mom actually owns a local bookstore back in, back in my hometown and community outreach has been a big part of my family for as long as possible. Um, then I asked her about it. She's like, oh yeah, community outreach, that's what's up. So we have a donation service. So when we go and break down these weddings, um, what we'll always go, we'll clean up all our mess. If we have rentals, which we always do to keep budget down for our brides um, and our grooms, and we'll go and we'll collect any arrangements that are left. We tell our clients the flowers are yours, but this, you know, the hard goods are ours because we're gonna use, reuse those mechanics and we're gonna reuse those vases and we're gonna gift them forward to our next wedding, right? And that's how we keep our, our prices down a little bit. Um, but if there are flowers that are left, then we give them a choice at the beginning. If there's flowers that are left, and you haven't told us whether you want to gift them or not, then we'll just take them and we'll either dry them out or we'll break them into many arrangements. But the service that they can specifically request is a donation service. And so we'll take all their flowers back home. We will recut them, rehydrate them, break them down into small mini arrangements, right? I mean, small little things. And we'll put a little tag on them. And it says, graciously gifted to you by newlyweds, blah, 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 blah. And we'll take them to the local um, retirement communities. We'll take them to schools and gift them to teachers. We'll sometimes we'll just take them to the, you know, just any random corporation because it's fun to get a sponsor. Who doesn't love flowers? Right. And so that's their couple. We always tell them, this is your best way. You know, you just came into this brand new chapter um, and you've given yourselves a, a gift of a, a new life. So why not gift it and pay it forward and start out on the right foot? Okay. So, um, so thrilled to have you here for this uh, program. Um, I know that everybody here is going to want to, um, you know, ask you lots more questions. Um, so you'll have that opportunity to, as they wander around, to help you with your um, uh, arrangements that you're doing here in person. I'm sorry to all of those that, uh, of you who are out there in Zoom land who can't do that, but you can contact them um, on their website. And um, I'm going to share my screen and with their contact info here. That's for all y'all too. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yes, please um, get in touch with um, Carrie and Sarath. Um, they do amazing work and uh, we're very fortunate to have you. Thank you once thank, again. Thank you for, for spending us. your Tuesday with us. And before yeah. we um, end today, I wanna to just um, tell you about a couple of things coming up with the Garden Club. Uh, it's almost time, guys, for bloops galore and more. Um, unfortunately, this uh, uh, plant sale could not happen last year because of COVID. Uh, <laughs> but it is going to happen this year, and uh, we have our preview party on April 9th. Um, so if you buy a ticket to that, you can come and uh, get the best selection of plants. Um, I highly recommend it. Uh, but the main event is on April 10th, and it's going to be hundreds and hundreds of plants and vendors selling environmentally themed um, things like uh, honey and uh, soaps and all sorts of great stuff. So please put that on your calendar, April 9th and 10th, because um, it's well worth it. And uh, coming up from hort Horticulture Corner is Native Parks. Nicholas Freeman um, is going to talk about the um, creation of the Native Parks 1 and 2 that are in uh, Riverside Avondale. And, uh, and how you can use native plants in your yard. 
Uh, our annual meeting, the Garden Club of Jacksonville has our annual meeting on April 22nd. So put that on your calendar if you're a member and if you're not a member, not too late to join. And this is very exciting, the return of Sip and See. Um, this is our member appreciation um, event that uh, is really great. And this one is Garden Party Punch. So Camp Craft Cocktails will be here and uh, they'll be mixing up some special cocktails. So yes, there is alcohol involved. It's very exciting. Um, and it'll be out in the courtyard and um, it'll be a really fun time. Uh, so please put that on your calendar as well. That is uh, May 6th. And uh, Designer of Distinction, uh, that is our annual event where we um, pay tribute to a really great designer this year. It's Ashley Woodson Bailey. She is actually from Jacksonville and she is a really um, fantastic floral arranger, but she also photographs her arrangements and then turns them into beautiful fine art prints and all sorts of products and fabrics. Um, so it's really amazing. So she's not only going to show you the floral arranging that she does, but she's also going to show you the process she uses to photograph them and turn them into really great works of art. So that's May 13th, and that will be a limited um, seating event here at the Garden Club, but also on Zoom at the same time. Uh, you will be getting a survey uh, in your email from us that asks you to rate today's uh, program. We really need your feedback. We want to know what you think. And also, it's a great opportunity to tell us what kinds of programs you want to see in the future, because uh, we really want to hear from you about that. Once again, I want to thank the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund for making programs like this possible. And I want to thank uh, Carrie and Sarath and my colleague Daniel and all of you out here at the Garden Club and all of you out there in Zoom for making this program a success because if we did this without you, we'd just be talking to ourselves and that's not much fun. So <laughs> thank you so much. Have a great evening. We're lo looking forward to seeing all of your great um, stuff that you make here. And if you make it at home, please send us pictures. We'd love to see them. All right. Good night, everybody. Thank you.